So for this giggle haul, I was actually thinking about singing to you guys, you know, because it is the holiday Christmas season and all that. But then I was like, who really wants to hear me sing? It is a cool idea though, like maybe rocking around the Giga Tree or Rudolph the Giga Deer. So maybe next year I'll do something like that for the holiday season. So welcome back everyone to Giga Hall Part 13. Wow, that's a lot of parts. And 13 is kind of like a weird, creepy number. So I hope it isn't a creepy type episode. I don't intend it to be that. But before we get into the video, I want to shout out Get Me Collectibles. If you guys need anything in terms of cars, definitely check out his eBay store. You could literally spend a day, like 24 hours, scrolling through his products. I'll leave his email in the description if you want a case or anything. But yeah, we're going to dive right into this part of part 13 of the gig hall like there is likely to be more segments to this as the video goes on for you guys because right now i only have like six seven boxes that ain't enough for a giga haul so hopefully as the weeks go on i'll gather some more boxes do another gig haul and this will expand and yeah we're going to start with what we have right here this yeah you guys probably have no idea what this is i didn't know what this was until just a few Weeks ago when I ordered it, thanks to Sensei Luminous, who actually showed it to me, but it is none other than the German version of Rochelle, who is named Heidi in the German version of planes, and it's IFC's version, like in their line of planes, which is kind of janky looking, as you can see here. One von Hipplein Samofluge, hoch in de Luft. But yeah, you have El Chupacabra, Echo, Skipper, Dusty, Aishani, Bravo, Ripslinger, and of course, Heidi. So that is, like I said, who replaces Rachel in the German version of Planes. Basically, Rachel is the Frosty of the Planes movies. So, you know, well, the Jeff Corvette, the Frosty, the Memo Rojas, the Longe, like in all the different versions of Cars 2, there is a localization effort, you know, to include somebody that the people of that country know. Like in Mexico, I don't know who Jeff Gordon, no, no conozco Jeff Gordon, pero Memo Rojas Jr. I know Memo Rojas Jr. And they would do that, obviously, for a bunch of other stuff. And that's exactly what they did for Rochelle in planes, even though it's not like Rochelle was based on an actual racer in real life. You know, Rochelle is voiced by a very prominent actress, Julie Lu Louis Dreyfus, but that is not like a racer. That's just an actress. And so, I don't know, I've kind of like quested myself to get all of the like different merchandise of these planes that are kind of scarce. Like, of course, I did a short on the model kit of Tanya. I'm sure you guys might have seen that. Definitely check that out if you have not. Hopefully this is pretty easy to assemble. It looks like it is. There's only three parts. I can't believe they even make you assemble this when it's so freaking small. Like I'm going to show you guys a size comparison here and it is minuscule. But anyway, like I was saying, you know, of course, Mattel only did the regular version of Rochelle and then the French version of Rochelle, which is very similar. Tomika did Sakura which is the Japanese version. Then there are, of course, model kits of Tanya and Monica, who appeared in the Italian version. And apparently there is also a model kit of Heidi here, but it is extremely rare, and I've never really seen one materialize, and why can I not get this part in here right now? And then there's like a lights and sounds larger plastic version of Tanya, which is the Russian one, of course. But there really aren't any like toys, I guess you could say, available for some of the other ones, you know, like Australia, China, whatnot. And oh my God, this is proving to be extremely difficult right now. I was like only three pieces. This shouldn't be hard at all. Oh yeah, I just needed to put my girth into it. Oh God, you hear like the creaking of that plastic. But yeah, here you go. Here's Heidi. I like that there aren't any stickers because, you know, that's how the model kits got a little wonky when I did Tanya. But yeah, it looks pretty good. Of course, you have the number 22 there. A little, I love how they even put the code there for the plane. Like what great detailing, even though it is lacking some of the other details that Heidi would have. Spinning propellers, stationary landing gear. And there you have it. That is Heidi. And Heidi is smaller then you may know like this is literally like a mini racer plane i guess it's basically what it is maybe even smaller than that 
They're yeah, really cool though. Like I'm happy to get this. Like it's just a nice little fun piece and it was cheap. I guess like shipping was like shipping was really like 17 times. Oh my god, there's stickers I have to put on it too. I'll do that later. But yeah, here are the stickers if you guys wanted to see. Shipping was like 17 times the price of this. I mean, I think the price of this was only like a buck 70 or something like that. By the way, whoever this is, I have no idea who this is, but they must have known like they're going to be in the Giga Hall. So to promote themselves, they stuck their label on the side of the box because they just knew they were like, it's going to be on camera somehow. The best way to promote our little company here is to slap our pick on the box. I love that. Great job, guys. But we're not going to go to your box first. We're going to go to this one because I know what this one is. And it is a prototype of none other than XRS Racer, Mud Racer, Jackson Storm. This guy's been on eBay for a long time. And if you've seen the price, don't think I paid that. I did not. I made an offer. But yeah, I was like, I knew this guy was on eBay for a long time. I'm surprised it has been on eBay for that long. And I realized like, oh, I have a lot of XRS Mud Racing prototypes, but I don't have this one. And when I say that, I mean like, yeah, prototypes are not always like one of one. There's usually like a handful of some of them, you know, some more than others, some truly are like, you know, there's only one of this, but some of the XRS racers, like there were multiples of, so I thought I might've had this one, but I don't. And so there you have, it. I like the wild color on Jackson's storm, like yellow. That's so cool. And the brown base for the mud. All right, so that is that. Let's get into this guy's box here. Toxic Select Start. Cool logo, dude. If you're watching this video, props to you for slapping the label on the box. You also put something in the box here. What is this? Looks like a little anime figure. Thank you. All right, cool. So this video is going to have like a little bit of a theme, at least in the beginning, and that is Disney Store stuff. Because I realized like the Disney Store gets a lot of unwarranted hate, and they're actually, like, the stuff they put out is actually quite fire, if I may say. Some of the stuff, obviously more than others, but they definitely have a very respectable line that they've built up over the last like 15 years and even though you know it's pretty much dead now like it seems that they're done making stuff for the most part I'm not saying that it's like fully dead but they really haven't put anything new out over the last year everything they've done before is you know awesome it holds up and one of my favorites that they've done ever is kabuto here I love that they gave him the red tires, which is accurate to the short. And for once, I actually prefer this expression to the Mattel expression. Like the Mattel one's not bad, but I just love how he's looking off to the side, like at Mater. Like I imagine him going through like the Tokyo Tower right now, being like, you could not defeat me, you know, like that kind of vibe. But that's what I'm getting from Kabuto here right now. I just love how he looks. Like he just looks so amazing. It's one of the best Disney store releases ever, in my opinion. Like, it looks great in person. It's got, like, a bare metal look to it right now. Oh, my gosh. I cannot contain myself. And it was a chaser. I wonder how many times. I'm sure I saw this guy in the store. I just chose not to pick him up because back in the day, I usually only bought stuff that the, you know, Mattel did not do. So, Disney store did it. Okay. Mattel didn't. I'll buy you. And it retailed, I think, for like six bucks in the USA or seven bucks, but eight dollars in Canada. So there's that. It's pretty exciting. What is this here? Is this from. Oh, yeah, I got a good deal on this. This is just like something I saw on eBay. And I was like, wow, that's way cheaper than what it usually goes for. So I'll snag it. I actually don't have this car open because I think it's stupid. I was like, there's no reason for me to open this. So I just kept the one I had previously got packaged. I don't think I'll be opening this one still. It is the worst super chase ever. Objectively, that is not an opinion, by the way. It is factually the worst super chase ever. Cruz Ramirez is Francis Beltline. Crazy 8 Francis Beltline. That is what makes it a super chase because Cruz Ramirez simply as Francis Beltline is just a regular release, but Crazy 8 Francis Beltline with a little bit more mud, 
super chase. It's horrible, laughable. Somebody botched this. Like, I doubt this is exactly what they intended to do. I mean, this is just really, honestly, a travesty. It's egregious what they did here. But yeah, Super Chase, it's expensive on eBay. Like it's rare, but no one really cares because it's so similar to just the regular version. But yeah, there you go. Cruz Mirrors is Francis Beltline there. Ooh. Ooh, what happened up here? I'm just going to leave that, I guess. Can't flip that down. Yeah. It's got a matte finish. I mean, it looks nice, but it's just not worthy of being a Super Chase when you release something that's so similar. It's a nice looking car though. I'm not knocking the car itself. This is a package here from Get Me Collectibles himself. So see guys, I'm not just joking around when I say stuff like that in the beginning of the video. I truly mean it. And this stuff is just random stuff. Like I was literally scrolling through his eBay store one day. I was like, oh yeah, I could use some of this stuff. First of all, Hall and Gas on Blue Desert card has become very rare. Get Me Collectibles had a great deal for him. So I was like, I'm gonna snatch that. And so I did. Like hauling gas from the Blue Desert era is on the same rarity almost as like, let me think of a good one, like Bruce Miller, like they labeled him as Bruce Miller, but it was Winford Bradford Rutherford, or sometimes like even Randy Lawson and Shiny Wax Tractor are kind of in the same boat as him here. Not the metallic version though, like when they released him metallic like a year later, still Blue Desert, it's not as rare. It's a great release though. But yeah, you can see on the back here, some other of the like very first tile and piston cut racers they did. Everyone kind of forgets they did Kevin Racing Tire because it was so long ago. But yeah, I can't believe that just a couple years ago they were still doing series. It seems like they had done away with that concept for a good long while now. And I'm so glad that Shannon Sharp here is on Mint Card because this is one of the cars that I just never was able to get a double of, believe it or not. I don't think... I looked in my archive, I looked in my records, and I don't have a double of this. I got one to keep in the package. I have one loose, and that's it. So, happy to get this. This was a case, I think it was like case, uh, at, no, it wasn't M, like J, maybe something around there. It had like Mo Revlin, Kevin, no, 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 not Kevin Revlin. It had like Mo Revlin, who else? Mo Revlin. God, why am I blanking? It was such a good case, though. Like, Sterling with headset. I don't know. I had some other cars like that, and I just never found it in the store. I think I found one Mo Revlin, and that was it. But, yeah, it's nice to get this special metallic edition, obviously. Not the greatest metallic release of all time, but it'll do. Wouldn't be surprised if she gets re-released sometime again, because she's a rather prominent character, I guess you could say, in Cars 3. All right, what do we have in this bad boy box? Oh, yeah. So this guy, like, took a week to ship this car. That was a little upsetting. Not that I care all that much, but it's like, you've had my money for a week now, dude. Time to ship it. But, yeah. Oh, man, this is on Mint Card 2. Oh, my gosh. That is so great. It was worth the wait, even though I didn't really wait for it because I've been at school this whole time. Just got back yesterday. Anywho, 2011 Color Changers Francesco Bernoulli, red to white. Of course, they reissued him in 2015 and then again 2020, but that's a different, well, at least the new one is red to blue. This is an extremely rare color changer. Almost all of the color changers from 2011 actually are quite rare. And what I love about this one is that they actually did like his side view mirrors correctly here. You can see how they like sprout up off of his body and outward like that. The diecast version of him just has like two nubs there, like two little clumps of plastic. <laughs> so I really like the color changer version of him. I don't think it changes to white as good as it looks right here. I don't think it looks quite that good. I change color with water. Cool. But that kind of is how it goes for all the color changers. You have yellow to black, World Grand Prix McQueen, Finn McMissile, <laughs> brown to blue, and Race Team Sarge, brown to brown. 
Raul Sarul is probably the rarest 2011 color changer, but if anyone can find the two pack of Francesco and Raul, you have basically just found like the fountain of youth and you should absolutely spend at least $100 on it, in my opinion, I don't know. I've never seen one for sale. So it's hard to gauge price for stuff like that. All right, what is in this little guy here? What we got here? A little receipt action from eBay. I want to know what it is. Oh, I know what this is. I just got this today. Fred. Yeah, so I needed one to open. I don't think I had one to open. and I had a nice one that I was going to keep packaged. This one is not in great condition, so it will be open for a video in which I compare this new Thailand variant to the previous Chinese iterations, and we get to compare all three sizes. That's right. There are now three different sizes of Fred. There's a mini, there is this one, and then there's your large Fred. So Fred has gone through quite the transformation over the last like 14 years of his existence. And I definitely want to talk about that. So I made sure to snag one to open. And this is that one. It's perfect. It's not going to make me feel bad for opening that. So there is Mr. Fred. And last but not least is a larger box here. I don't know if I could even bring it all into frame. Wow. Da 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 da. Da, 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 da. It is another Disney store item. So yeah, I'm kind of getting into the Disney store stuff. This was a phenomenal deal on Mercari. And I have to make amends. I have to apologize to the seller. I didn't do anything to the seller, but like I sent this link to some of my friends. I was like, the seller literally named it the Holy Moly set. I'm like, are you like that is so funny like that is a joke right you're naming it as if you're like saying holy cow like holy moly because it has <laughs> like catholic like religious type things going on in here but it's actually called that like what it's actually called holy moly diecast set that kind of blows my mind i cannot believe they actually named it that but yeah this is just something fun it's not in great condition but i'll still keep it in the package it is the only diecast releases of the Pope and the Pope Mobile from the Disney store. And in fact, like they look to be relatively the same size as the Mattel versions. That would be a cool comparison. But it does look like the Pope Mobile there is the same size, especially as the Mattel version. Uncle Topolino's in this one as well. Luigi and Guido back there without their 95 stickers, so that's technically inaccurate. Mather has his, though, which is also inaccurate for this point in the movie. They should have flipped those. But, yeah, this is pretty cool. It's got a nice kind of, like, Italian architecture design on the box here. You have Luigi and Guido and Mater peeking their head back there. And they show you a couple other sets on the back here, like London Calling, Traveling Through Tokyo, and, of course, Holy Moly. I love... It's so weird that they say Traveling Through Tokyo, but and then these ones actually say Diecast Set. And each of them have a different font. That's actually pretty cool. Collect all three sets. Oh my God, this retailed for 60 bucks in the USA? 74.50 in Canada? I spent less than that. Wow. It's very, well, it didn't actually like depreciate in value. Like I think I paid like 40 bucks for this. That's it. That's incredible that it's lost like a third of its value. But it really hasn't. I just got lucky and found a good deal. Somebody didn't really know what they had, I suppose. But I don't know. <laughs> if I looked at the sticker, I mean, I don't even need to know that this is like a rare box set. I just need to look at the sticker and be like, wow, I should at least get what it sold for 15, well, what is it now? 12 years ago or something like that. Somebody will probably correct me vehemently in the comments below. But yeah, that is the end of this segment of the Giga Hall. And I'm sure I'll see you in a couple mere moments but for me it'll be days so that'll be fun time travel ladies and gentlemen you just witnessed time travel hmm. it was actually just like a week and a half 
We're back, and this is absolutely bonkers. Now, it might have been wise for me to split this up into Giga Hall Part 13 and Part 14, but that is completely antithetical to the mission of the Giga Halls, which is to make them as giggly giga as possible. And not on my watch, we ain't removing nothing. So let's dive right on in here with this very exotic pink lightning mcqueen factory custom now in the 12 days of christmas i just reviewed a green one of these and i have to say this is better and i will be reviewing it at some point my initial idea is literally to do it for valentine's day as cliche as that sounds i just think that would be so cool and yeah make for a fun little festive review and these are available on aliexpress you can message me on instagram or twitter or whatever to get the link for that but i don't think they are on ebay just yet which is a little surprising however as all factory customs do they will make their way to ebay now this is going to be one of the few hot wheels in the video as it completes my hot wheels beat that video game collection it wasn't the most expensive one to obtain but it was by far and definitely is the rarest of the Beat That video game cars. It is Bully Goat from the 2006, I think, or 2005 Vertical V-Drop playset. Like, I paid more for the Acceleracer's Spectite, the Cosmic Spectite, for example, but, like, you could readily get those. There's usually at least, like, one on eBay at any given moment. However, I've never seen one of these on eBay, Mercari, Facebook Marketplace, etc. So, big thanks to a fellow collector of mine who was put in touch with me by Acceleries. So, thank you guys both if you're watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll probably do a video, you know, with the remaining Beat That collection that I wasn't showing the last time I did a collection update in November of 2021. All right, so we have some prototypes here, which I'm pretty stoked about. This is one that I've only ever seen one exist of, which is pretty rare, like that Nigel Gearsley that we'll show in a second. I know there are two that exist, and so when I don't know of another one existing, it makes this feel a little bit more special. And obviously, this is a Eric Laneley from Thailand. And yeah, you could tell this is a Thailand one because of the tan base and the dark blue and the red parts. Very characteristic of Thailand prototypes. And looks like he's even got some tape on there. So yeah, this is really awesome. And it's actually my second Eric Laneley prototype I have in the collection. All right, next up we have a Chinese canceled Chris Roman. So of course, Chris Roman was one of the very first cars to be released from Thailand back in 2018. And obviously because he was on that cusp there, they intended to do him from China. So here's one of the Chinese prototypes that never made it two stores but quite a few of them did leak out and this one's in perfect condition i have one somewhere in this insane mess right here that is actually in horrible condition so it'll be kind of fun to see that in a second here's the nigel gearsley prototype i was talking about i really like this one it's got some nice colors i like the wheels on it a lot yellow side view mirrors blue spoiler and not chipped at all really a pristine prototype now, a lot of the stuff you're seeing here came from overseas, from Taobao or Idlefish, and one of my great friends in real life, actually, not somebody I've met on the cars community, but somebody I have met at my college, in fact, helped me obtain all of these, and I know she's probably watching, so I want to give a huge shout out to her. She's truly incredible, and I am so grateful for all of her help. With obtaining these cars that I never would have been able to otherwise. And so yeah, here is the Chris Roman that is absolutely beat to heck. <laughs> Lots of scratches on this one, but it really gives it some character. So I don't mind that at all. Truly, I really don't. As crazy as it sounds like, oh, I don't mind that my car is in horrible condition. I think it's actually kind of cool. A lot of the stuff is still in the baggie, so I'll make it <laughs> a little more mysterious more anticipation because i don't know what everything truly looks like and this is a padre from el matador or it's a father burke i think this actually oh my gosh i can't believe i don't know this is either father burke or padre from el matador and it's a prototype because it's got the drill bit i know this is a super weird prototype but it has that drill bit imprint in the hood there and it doesn't have a date stamp even though there are some cars from this era that were released and don't have date stamps so it's not a like for sure 
thing when you know you see that your car doesn't have a date stamp you can't always just jump to the conclusion it's a prototype but that drill bit is very characteristic of prototypes and we're going to see it pop up here quite a few more times now I wanted to snag a couple octane gain pities here this is the wide one that was released in the hauler set the hauler racer and pity they would always include a wide version of that team's pity unless it was like chick hicks i actually maybe they even did it for him but like when they released mac it was just my name's not chuck but yeah this is pretty cool not in the best of condition but still nice to have and there is another one here take this guy out of his little tiny bag so how are you guys doing so i'm actually recording this on December 26th and hopefully I can get it out like I'm recording in the wee hours of the morning in fact I'm using a new phone that I got for Christmas and I can't get this out of the bag so we're just gonna move on you guys can clearly see what it is but yeah I'm recording on a new phone and because of that there were some technical difficulties and that's why I am recording in the wee hours of the morning on the following day it just you know Apple changed a few things and it Threw me for a loop. Now here is a Sarge. I thought this was going to be a prototype. This is like the Sarge that they released with a Canon, I think it is. Pretty sure. Yeah, because they would attach the Canon to his hitch back there. But unfortunately, it is not a prototype. Oh well. Now I have an extra of this. No big deal. Let's go to this poor bud here who's locked up in his plastic baggie. And he is one of the ones that we will see here with the drill bit on his roof right there. So you can see, boink. It's actually got like a little dimple right there as well. But I don't know why they make these drill bits. It really mind boggles me. But yeah, that is what they do quite frequently. I think in one of my previous gig hauls, maybe, maybe not, I have a Jeff Corvette with a drill bit as well. But yeah, here is a bud. Pretty cool. Everything else on him is complete though, so it's not like he's got colorful parts that we've come to expect on some prototypes. And nor does this prototype Tomiko. Now Tomiko is extremely rare in and of herself, but what makes this one a prototype is the fact that her hat is completely smooth. It doesn't have any ridges to it. And this is, yeah, again, a very odd prototype. And in fact, I discovered the existence of one of these from a Facebook cars community member. I was like, oh yeah, like that is not how they're supposed to look. That is a prototype. And so here we are a few years later and I was able to acquire one of my own, which is really exciting to have a prototype of such a rare car since you know Tamika was only released in that Toys R Us five pack long ago, 2011-12. Here are a couple canceled Road Trip Lizzie, oh no, no, Fan Favorites Lizzie's. Road Trip Lizzie was also canceled, but none of those leaked out, unfortunately, with, of course, the hat. Both of them had a hat just like this, but obviously this is for the Fan Favorites because she's repping McQueen and Cruz. And I have another one here that's awesome because two of the windows, or all the windows on this, like, corner back here are not painted, so it makes it a little bit different. And it's really funny because they're only, like, four codes apart. You can see this one's 328 and this one's 324 and yet one of them is much more complete than the other so pretty stoked about these two really cool lizzie i love the expression on that it's really a shame that she was canceled because lizzie does not get much love and very tightly snug in this bag here is the canceled shifty drug semi cab from 2017 and you could tell that this is different from the one that was released with the hauler in 2010 because its hole is gone it's all filled up right there they're like yeah we're not letting you buy semi cabs and putting them with your haulers we are not allowing you to do that you have to buy the whole thing if you want to connect it to your trailer i don't know i would assume the real reason is just because it's cheaper to do it this way not anything as cynical as what i was insinuating all right here we have a plastic chick hicks i think this is from the basic collection although it could be from a play set i'm gonna go with the basic collection though and yeah this is just kind of a nice piece i know it's very similar to the die cast mattel did as a scavenger hunt with the piston cup stand but it's still nice to have 
And a lot of the stuff from Taobao is very inexpensive, so it's worth it. Here's another prototype of Paint Mask Lightning McQueen. What makes him a prototype, you may ask? Well, his expression and the mouth, particularly. His mouth is supposed to be just kind of, it's a very weird mouth. You could look it up. It's just got like a it's circular type mouth and it's like all tongue. He's like, Ooh. it's like that emoji where you're just like shocked. And here he's got, I don't know, this looks like the mouth of some McQueen that was released around the same era, but I'm not sure which McQueen that is. So yeah, pretty cool. I have seen one of these somewhere else before, so I know that it's not like an air because I have seen several of them out and about. All right, how about we do another Hot Wheel real quick? I found this actually at Walmart. They had so much of this case, the 2023 A case, and I was looking for like a treasure hunt or whatever, and none of that, but it was the first time I found this coupe clip. Even though it's like the third color that they've done of this coupe clip, it's a very, very popular release. I have never been able to find it before, but I did finally snag one, and I think I might do a video on it, just like maybe a fun short, so I'll probably open it up then. But yeah, this is really cool. I can't wait to see the functionality behind this. Like, it's actually a clip, because you can see it doesn't have wheels. It's meant to, like, hold your money or whatever, which I think is so cool. All right. Now this guy's wrapped up a little bit more tightly here. He's still got the bubble wrap on him. And I've shown this before in another video, but it is the canceled Miles Meat Truck Malone from 2017, I think it was, right around there when they were going to release him in the Radiator Springs Classic line, but they ultimately didn't. You can see it's got a code up there, 028. And if you were to put this one side by side with regular miles from 2010, this is more orangey than red. And the trailer is quite a bit different in terms of its material and how it's textured. So yeah, this is really cool. It's really a shame though that he was not released because it's kind of a cool car that it's only been released once and the exact same thing applies to actually not really Leroy traffic with snow tires. What's different is that Leroy did get released last year in 2021. Although he absolutely did not look like this. He had a entirely new expression. He had a different color. That's inaccurate. But this is how he was supposed to look back in 2017 when they were going to release him from China in the Radiator Springs Classic line. You can see they have some writing up here. And yeah, this is the prototype. Canceled car, whatever you want to call it. Very cool. And if you were to compare this to the 2010 version, the color is slightly different. So there is that. Alrighty, now we have some of the European magazine cars, which I find super cool. This line is way more expansive than you think. Now, I'm mainly talking to people not in Europe. Like if you're in Europe, you might see these at the store in Italy occasionally. I think they're sold there, they're sold in UK and whatnot. So you might be more familiar with the line than everybody else, but I swear every day I like discover a new one of these that exists. I'm like, oh wow, they did Becky Whelan. Oh wow, they did La Yellow Bird. I was about to say Little Bird, but yeah, Yellow Bird. They've done sharps like so many planes. And here's just another example of that. It is not even just boost, it is boost with flames. So yeah, if you guys don't even know anything about this, they sell these plastic cars that still roll and everything, and they're very nicely detailed with magazines. And I think they maybe do like four issues a year, maybe a little bit more than that. I'm not sure they, I don't think they do them anymore though, which is kind of sad to be honest. That actually is very disappointing. And I have a few more of them here hiding behind a couple guys is Sergeant High Gear. So again, another one where you're like, wow, I can't believe they did that. And so that makes it three brands that have done Sergeant High Gear. Disney Store, Mattel, and the magazine guys. And I think they might have even done this before Mattel. I can't see a year on the back here, though. Everything's ran in other languages. But yeah, that's awesome. They even, like, give them some sort of series designation there. All righty. And there is one more somewhere over here. Oh, yep, I got it. The Big Mama, Miss Fritter. So this is pretty cool. It's a quite a big one. You can see like compared to a regular car right here. I mean, it is taller than your average single. 
and about two thirds the width of it. So yeah, pretty large there. By the way, we'll get to that air in a second. Don't worry. I really do like the artwork that they give Miss Fritter here. It's like a little cartoony, but it's got some mud on it. Looks pretty fun. And yeah, the card backs don't have jack squat though. So yeah, those are the three magazine cards that I obtained in this whole escapade. And let's get into, we're going to wait for that stuff. You guys might be looking at it, might be salving at the mouth, but we're going to wait to get that in a little bit. Here is something super weird. I'll probably do a video on this eventually, but it is a Danny Suarez monster truck. So you might remember last winter last december i did a video on like a jackson storm mater cruise mirrors and mcqueen monster trucks and i think this one's like a little different it's got treads and everything so it's not the same brand or i mean brand i mean like the same bootlegger counterfeit er because these aren't official mattel products or really any official products but yeah danny swervez i wanted to add it i thought it'd be cool to have a danny swervez monster truck and yeah it looks pretty cool even came with like a little ramp so that's kind of nice and you could just see like how wonky this packaging is inertia stunt vehicle i don't think they know what inertia means four by four suspension and yeah they do have some others in this quote unquote brand like mater and mcqueen but their treads are colored which i don't really care for that's why i like the other ones better they even have the igniter jackson storm mcqueen with green treads what how wacky is that? All right, staying with the bootleggers, we have this really cool, actually, factory custom Mac. Now, a lot of people don't care about this because they see the trailer and they're like, ew, that is so disgusting. They have the die cast on here. It's not just Rusty's Racing Sarah McQueen. It's the Sandy version. They put the Hudson Hornet Piston Cup logo on there. They put all these Cars 1 sponsors on there. It just looks horrible. It is not movie accurate in the slightest. And I totally agree. And that is why I completely discard that. And I'm just going to display the semi here, which is actually really cool because it actually is almost movie accurate. I actually, I don't know, did he have yeah, I think he was kind of like this. It's kind of like the Jocko Flacco Mac hauler. But yeah, I think this is pretty nice. You know, you have the gold 95 on each side and the rusties on the hat there. The expression kind of will give you nightmares. But other than that, pretty cool. And the tires are like, they almost are rubber. They're like a few molecules away from being rubber, which is pretty wild. I mean, just look at them. That is like not your usual tire texture. So yeah. Big shout out for this factory custom that gets overlooked because it's paired with something that is not so desirable. All right, bet you've never seen this before. Mini infrared remote control car from the Disney store. And this is an old product. Like they don't make these anymore and they probably haven't made anything like this in over 12 years. Let's see when they copyrighted this. Why can't I find any copyright on here? I cannot believe this was $16.50, so that seems a bit much. Oh, I can't find the copyright year on here, which is unfortunate. But yeah, I thought this was just fun. I've never seen anything like it. I assume they did others like it, but yeah, I guess you can control Mater with this remote control that kind of looks like a launcher. I don't know. I don't intend to open it, but if you guys have ever seen these like it, let me know how these work. Kind of reminds me of that Red's Courthouse that I did review on several, I think it was like a year and a half ago, or maybe it wasn't, whatever. The Red's Courthouse, I think that was actually like this past May, where there was a Lightning McQueen remote control car within it. It didn't end up working, but it actually it worked for like a split second while I was testing it off camera. And then when I wanted to record, it was like, yeah, I'm like 12 years old. Can you please just let me rest? All right, we're going to pivot to a Cars themed mini tree skirt. And this was a birthday present from my mom that I thought was really creative because I had never seen anything like it before. It came in this Hallmark box here and I'll show you the tree topper here in a second but yeah this is really cool it's so odd and it insinuates there must be like a designated tree for this but it's got such a cool graphic on here you could see mcqueen mater some tractors luigi and guido all the good stuff really soft and it's just like perfect for like a little mini tree which i mean maybe they don't have one for cars but 
you could easily get one. And I thought the best part about it was the tree topper that I wasn't able to really use in the 12 days of Christmas because all the reviews were down on the table. But I think you might have caught a glimpse of it in my day 12 review. It's a really nice piston cup, it's got a good spring on it. And yeah, again, just perfect for a mini tree that you set up, you know, not in your living room. You set it up like in your bathroom or somewhere like on a landing, I don't know, somewhere nice. All right, let's move on to a couple 2022 two-packs that I just gave up on finding in the store. I found mm, Nate Stanchion and Jessica Jam Patrol, and that was it. And I was like, all right, ships probably sailed, so I decided to buy Road Trip Mater and K-Pillar Derev off eBay just to keep in the package. They're the same as, you know, their single versions, which Mater is, you know, same as how he's always been from Thailand. Now, Noriyuki and Sarah Cogs, I didn't buy, didn't find in a store because they are going to be in future two-pack cases that I have revealed. I actually revealed case Q, and I'll be able to review the next two-pack case on January 1st, so stick around for that if you care. So yeah, I was like, all right, I'll probably have another chance to find that one and decided not to buy it, but I did get Mike Fuse and Zen Master Pity. This is a really cool set, actually. Super underrated, these last couple two-packs from Cars 2. And Zen Master Pity has, like, a new expression. I need to open one up because looking at him in the package does not do him justice. That expression is awesome. He's got the mustache. I absolutely need to get one of these out of the package. Mike Fuse, though, pretty much the same. It's like Eric Lanley from Thailand. Pretty much the same as the Chinese counterpart. All right, now for whatever reason, I was in a rush. I didn't film myself when I went to Ross, but I managed to obtain a Trash Talkers Francesco Bernoulli, 15 plus sounds and phrases. So let's give it a go. Not bad, that is pretty intense racing. I wanna hear him say something like really badass like he did in the movie. Thank you. Thank you, Francesco. That is exactly what I wanted. But yeah, $6 at Ross. They had like three of these. Not what I was looking for. I was actually looking for the NASCAR 5-pack with Cruz Ramirez that a lot of people have been finding at Ross. But to no luck. I actually checked two stores and didn't find it. All right, here we have an Air National Package Sidewall Shine hauler. You know, believe it or not, a lot of these 2010 haulers are still lurking around in Chinese factories or whatever. So a lot of sellers have their hands on them right now and are selling them for pretty reasonable prices. Packages, not great, but hey, these are rare haulers that I don't ever see getting re-released. Now this one's really bad, bad shape. Final Tupe Hauler International because the blister over here is cracked there it's cracked up top and obviously it's all yellowed the packaging itself is yellowed and even i think the decals might have yellowed a little bit too you can see it on his hat there and it's hard to tell obviously but i think some of the stickers on the hauler yellowed as well so that's unfortunate but again it happens. And for whatever reason, the vinyl toupee hauler is like the only one I see it happen to. Like I've never seen a yellow shifty drug or a sidewall shine. I guess, yeah, both of them haulers. I've never seen either of those yellowed. I'm sure they exist out there, but the vinyl toupee one just gets it bad. Speaking of bad packages, we have a Francesco Bernoulli launcher here. Yeah, this guy's pretty beat up, but on the bright side, it's a pretty rare launcher, so I could live with it. Now, a lot of launchers that are sold like from China from 2011 in the package are prototypes. Like there's an eBay seller that has a Lightning McQueen one on yeah eBay right now. I have a Carlo Veloso one. That's actually really cool. It's better than, you know, I'm about to show you one and it's better than the one on eBay right now because it doesn't have any decals on the launcher. It like talks about, shows Nigel Gearsley on the packaging. It shows somebody else on the back and it has Carla inside. So really cool. This one though, doesn't look like it's a prototype or if it is, it's very much so completed. However, this Jeff Corvette one has some Chinese writing up on the top. Now I'm sure you guys will argue like, hey, you could have just written that. It doesn't make it a prototype and uh, you could be right, I guess, but since <laughs> this 
package looks like it's been around the block a few times and they're known to you know have a lot of these launcher prototypes in the package i'm going to venture to guess that it is one plus it helps me sleep better at night it doesn't look like it has a date stamp either so yeah jeff corvette launcher another one that was really rare and pretty much only made it to usa kohl's stores and some places internationally all right so yeah as you can see here i have a couple more buds you guys might get mad at me for this, but I mean, they were very inexpensive and they're all prototypes. They all have the drill bit. So I did end up getting a few buds. Shoot me if you don't like it. All right, let's move on to that launcher I te launcher air I teased a bit ago. Lightning McQueen with Rusty's sign. Now the seller on eBay didn't know this was an air. So you might ask, how did you find it? And it was completely luck. I honestly was just like looking for something else. And then I was like, what is that? That doesn't look right. He's missing all of his decals on the side. And so I you know, bought it and I was like, okay, that's, that's pretty nice. Pretty lucky. I cannot tell if he has the decals actually. All right. Yeah, I can tell. I won't really be able to show you. I mean, it'd be really tough to see. Oh, I guess you can kind of see it in the top left there, but he does have the decals on the other side. So this is just a problem on the outward facing side, which is perfect because if it was flipped, you wouldn't know it was a air. Pretty cool air. Honestly, I have not seen one like this in a while. And these are ones that I really love. I don't give a something foul about ones that just have like a name tag. That's wrong. If that, I mean, I know they don't do name tags anymore, but like if, let me give you a good example here in just a moment. If this Rev Rodages actually said Marcus Krangsler, it wouldn't excite me. But yeah, this is Rev Rodages, the Vinyl Toupe stock car that's become quite rare nowadays. So got an extra of it, even though it's not in great shape. Car is though, that's what matters. Or maybe not. Now guys, they started doing the streamlined packages all the way back in 2011. However, this is specifically made for Korea. I'm pretty sure, pretty, pretty sure that all of the additional writing here is Korean. Now, if you want to correct me, go for it. But I think it is Korean. And so I don't know why. Honestly, I've never seen specific Korean packaging before besides this. They did do, like I've seen Finn McMissile in this packaging before. I would assume all of these exist, but I've never seen them with my own two eyes. And I would assume that they're pretty rare. I have two McQueens like this now. I want to get the Finn McMissile. But yeah, I mean, it's exactly like how they package the cars nowadays. You know, they have the name tag on the actual card and then the blister forming around the car. So really cool. It's kind of like the absolute premonition of what, end up coming to us in 2022 and it's not something that started you know in 2022 and that was just like a fluke they were doing all this stuff starting in 2016 2016 was the first year that they really started using these packages primarily in latin and south america so i have quite a few examples here now they did used to like black and white the back of them except for the cars daredevil garage advert so super weird. I'm glad that they didn't black and white the current packages because that would really stink. That would be like a complete downgrade. But they did give us color, thankfully. But you can see here, I have three Chick Hickses. I don't know why I got three of them. Again, shoot me. But yeah, three Chick Hickses on <clears throat> Excuse me, this packaging. Now, what I found interesting about them is that two of them have the date stamp up in the front here. So you see that? You see that, but this middle one has it back there. I don't know. That was just something interesting I saw, but they are all the same from, I think, 2016. Yeah, 2016. Yep, 2016. <laughs> I was like, it can't be 2017 because it has the Cars Daredevil Garage app logo. All right, we're going to wait on those. I have now three 2017, no, no, 2016 again, DJs from Sheriff's Impound Lot series. 2016 and 2017 really blurred together for me because they use the same packaging design. But again, you have Cards Daredevil Garage there. So yeah, you have three DJs here on the Streamline Blister using the good old 2006 stock image. Love it. 
Love that they're still using that. This one, they have the date stamps in the exact same spots on all three. Yeah, I'm just a killer for the details, aren't I? Like, who even cares about that? All right, it's color change in time. We have a Radiator Springs Lightning McQueen that changes from red to black. Now, all the color changers from this era have become very, very rare. Like, even though they've released some of them again, like I know they've done Daryl Cartrip, they did him again, they did Snot Rod again, they did DJ again. They still are very, very sought after and rare. And that is amplified for the ones that they didn't do in 2015, 2016, or in present day such as Flo and a couple others we'll get to. So yeah, here you have Radiator Springs McQueen and Snot Rod. These are all in pretty good card, which is surprising because they made quite the journey all the way over from China. This one, not so much, but you have Ramon from red to yellow. This one, people don't really care about because they already like released Ramon in these two colors as die cast so i really did not like this one when i was like nine years old and getting some color changers here and there this one really did not float my boat what did float my boat though was flow i have such a distinct memory of finding this one i was accompanying my mom on a business trip in atlanta georgia and we went to the Target and I remember finding this color changer flow along with the Lightning McQueen with Rusty's can lenticular chase, which I didn't buy because I already bought the can itself loose. You guys would know that if you watched like a previous gig haul where I actually finally bought the package chase McQueen with the can there. I remember changing colors of the flow in the hotel room on top of like the vent by the window. Such a great memory, and it is, in my opinion, the best color changer Mattel has ever released because she changes from two colors that aren't her original, and they are both amazing. It's not like, you know, if McQueen changed from like a slightly different red to yellow. No. This is two completely different colors. Purple, bluish, to pink. Straight up pink. Who would have ever guessed they'd do such wild colors on flow? Like, I feel like Today, Flo would just change from like her usual teal to like blue or green or something like this. But pink, oh my God, it is the best color changer ever in my humble opinion. And to have one in the package is so exciting because it's one of the rarest that they ever did. However, not as rare as Axel Accelerator here. He was only released, you know, like in the last wave and for whatever reason became rarer than some of his buddies like Bob Cutlass and Race Tow Truck Tom. Sally was super rare until she got re-released. He only changes from black to blue though, so not as exciting, but still kind of nice and such an odd choice for a color changer. I changed color with water. I could make that in Microsoft Word. I'm sure you can too. So I'm glad that they don't use that logo anymore because it's quite pedestrian. Here is Race Tow Truck Tom, another weird one. I mean, I'm not, I have this one loose. I bought it when I was a kid, but the only part that changes color is this strip down at the bottom here, yellow to red. Eh. Doesn't make much sense to me. You have like this entire blue part that you just left the same. It looks cool and all, like it looks fine, but I think they could have done a better job with this one. So yeah, it could, it could stay rare. You don't need to re-release this one. I don't see them re-releasing any wild color changes like this when they have cars on the road to play with now. Got a couple of the newer ones here from 2015, 16. You have Daryl Cartrip from gray to blue. Another one that it's okay. Not great. It's okay. Last for the color changers is DJ here. Another one that I don't think is great. Changes from dark blue to light blue. Man, look how high his spoiler is in that top pick there. That is not right. Look at that. It's like it hasn't been fully pressed in. And you can see it's just how it's supposed to look. <laughs> That's so odd to me. I've never seen that before. So yeah, there you have DJ. There you have all the color changers I obtained. Also obtained from 2010 a couple Final Lap Chick Hickses. Now, for whatever reason, some of the more basic releases from the Final Lap collection are the rarer ones. Like, yeah, Jay Limo, 
no, obviously race damage mood springs, but believe it or not, like the King, <sighs> Chick Hicks, Radiator Springs McQueen, Doc Hudson, those have become very rare, very hard to find. Maybe it's because people don't care. They're like, this has been released a billion other times. Who cares about the 2010 one? But I do when I'm trying to complete my final lap set. So it's nice to have Chick Hicks because it's one that I was missing. Like I have pretty much every like new release from 2010, but almost missing all of the ones that were not new to the final lap collection. 2017, before Cars 3 era, I have two from here. You have Krusty Roeder on international packaging. Quite rare, and it's the only time he was released from China with the flat eyelids. I love the artwork that they gave him for this release. It was the first time they ever used that artwork, so it's really nice. Kepatepatopa. Yeah, I know how to speak that language. That I don't even know what that is. That looks like Romanian or something. If I'm right about that, I'm going to lose my mind. Probably Russian, to be honest, but I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what that language is. Here you have Don Crumlin on international packaging, also from the same time, 2017 Before Cars 3, the London Chase series, London Attack, whatever. Also quite a rare release. He was only previously released in 2012. Aeon Capotote. I don't know. It's like Russian, but it's not. I don't know. You guys got to let me know. I'll probably Google it after this, but you guys can tell me. Please nicely in the comments below. Disney store time. We have this really, again, I know I'm saying rare a lot, but this stuff is rare. You can't find this on eBay. I dare you. I double dog dare you. A Chase 2-pack of Best of Friends Chief Chick Hicks without headset and the Surfing Safari John Lassatire. That's kind of like the one from the end of Cars 2, excuse me. Oh my gosh, I can't do that on camera. Oh wow, it was just a little air bubble. Anyways, it's like that one, but it shouldn't have the surfboard. So it's kind of like a hybrid of the like one at the end of Cars 2 and then the one that Mattel did for all the Cars 2 employees. That's like the red burgundy color. So yeah, pretty nice. Again, Chick's Crew Chief and John Lassatire. I don't know. Okay, so yeah, 10 euros. Wait, 18 euros, 10 pounds? That doesn't seem right. Seems a little odd, a little off to me. But yeah, there's some better two packs than that I'm trying to get. Like there's a Reindeer Mater and the Christmas McQueen. There are Ferrari and somebody else. All right, I don't know how much we have left to go, but. These are probably the highlights, at least for me, from this Giga Haul because they are basically one-of-a-kind prototypes that I have never seen before. You have Finn McMissile, Mater, and Race, Pit Crew member, Race Team, Fillmore in short card Cars 2 packaging, but they are not, like, I know this is glued. Somebody, like, took this out of the package when they photographed it for me like the seller or whatever. I'm not going to do that because it looks like it's in there pretty good. So we could just take a look from the outside. But first of all, you can see that the name tag is completely flat, like it doesn't bend around the blister. And it is a unibody, which the 2011 fin did not have. It has a slightly different expression from the 2011 fin. It feels even heavier than the 2011 fin. Inexplicable. I have no idea, like where these came from like what really are they but they are some of the coolest prototypes that i have in my collection and on the back here you could see mater finn mcqueen francesco holly rod jeff carla and professor z now this one's super peculiar because it has the picture of the die cast on the packaging i have no idea how he photographed these out of the packaging it's like he retaped them or something yeah, I don't know. Don't want to think about it. But yeah, you have an actual picture of the die cast on the card instead of a picture of you know the animated film form. And also, they never released this as a single. They did a two pack, I think, or maybe something like that. But they just did film more without the headset as a single. So yeah, really wild. 
This one isn't as exciting as the other ones, in my opinion, but having the die cast on the card is what makes it. Mater is the best because they actually use the Precision Series model that didn't come into existence for another like six, five, six years. This is incredible to me. It's such an odd prototype. You can see it has like the two distinct tires in the back there. His tires are way slimmer in the front. It's just, it's mind boggling to me what these are. I need to know. But you can see the windows different. The paint's it's a little shinier on him. It's not as matte. And yeah, he's got a different expression than your typical race team mater. Anybody has any ideas about what these could be, please let me know. And the back of this one's also kind of strange. Actually, never mind. I thought, oh yeah, yeah. See, this one has all the like legal jargon on the back. Whereas these two, like they're clearly prototypes because they, <laughs> they're like, yeah, we ain't gonna put all that stuff on there when we're just using these as samples. So yeah, super odd to me. Really have no idea what these are all about. Mather's the best though because he's a completely different model, and honestly, it's way better than the one that ended up coming out. So yeah, there are the highlights in my opinion of this Giga Hall. But we are not done yet. We are not done. I have the Salt Fever 9 pack with exclusive, or so far exclusive, Peggy Liner. So you'll see a video review on her soon. But yeah, there she is. Very excited to see such a unique car. Something that Mattel has really never done before in you know, releasing a super long car. Literally. All right, one more item I have here, I believe. And it's a big one. So I'm going to have to really yoink this up here onto the table. We're going to have to put these guys back a little bit to protect them from this girthy mama that's about to jump onto the table. It is this Piston Cop like 15 pack from the Disney store they released a long time ago. I think they might have re-released this for the anniversary. But anyways... The King, Fillmore, Sarge, Chick Hicks, Sheriff, Lay McQueen, Doc as Hudson Horn. That's a weird way to describe him. Mater, Flo, they call these exclusives Johnny Blamer, Chuck Armstrong, and Dexter Hoover, Ramon, and Luigi and Guido. Now, what's really interesting and cool about this set is that it was sold at the Disney Shanghai Disney Park. So, or the Disney Resort, whatever you want to call it. But they have like a Disney World in Shanghai. And this was sold there. And you can see it even has like some Shanghai Disney tape in the center there. And yeah, this was actually released before the 15th anniversary. Because I know they re-released Dexter Hoover as a single for the 15th anniversary. And then, therefore, he would not be exclusive anymore. But yeah, you can see he's chilling up here. The package is really jacked, but... You get the idea. <laughs> yeah, the package is really screwy. But just a really cool layout for a set. And a lot of people don't even know that the Disney store did Mood Springs and Faux Wheel Drive here. They look actually really nice. Mood Springs is an interesting model that they don't really use much. Or at least doesn't look like the Mattel version. You have Doc back there with his headset on a cardboard rusty stand. And yeah, it's a big set. Diecast Deluxe gift set. And it sold for 600 Chinese yuan, I think, yen. I'm not sure. RMB, how about that? I know that's correct because that's how they always abbreviate it when I buy this stuff. All right, guys, that is all for the Giga Hall part 13 that is probably over yep definitely over an hour i hope you guys enjoyed it hopefully you derive some you know fascination from seeing this diverse selection of cars i don't think it can get much diverser than this i mean we have prototypes we have canceled cars we have just regular old releases we have airs we have tree toppers i mean this is insanity we have stuff that's beat up so badly that you could just like smell the raw metal chipping off of it you have stuff that's in great condition oh my god this has been such a wild giga haul really thank you guys so much for watching and i hope this doesn't sound like you know yeah like i'm boosting my ego but if you want to 
participate that is awesome tell me what is your favorite item that you saw today and is there something that you saw you didn't know about and now you want to get it or you just saw it and you didn't know about it before either way let me know in the comment section below as always i love doing these videos happy new year i'll see you guys soon for another video bye now